There's a third reaction. There's a third reaction. There's a third reaction. As I'm talking, people's heads slowly start to tilt to the side. Because they notice that there is a slight discrepancy between the way that I look and the way that I sound. So allow me to answer the burning question of mine. We are just getting the answer. Vietnamese. Good. Moving on. One at a time, in any order that you'd like. We like the base. We like the base. Mickey Mouse. Oh, oh, boy, come on, Goof, let's go! You're a blonde if you like. I missed prom for this. Uh, let's see another name on that list, please. Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin. Holy cow, all right, I have to remember not to swear in front of all the kids. Does anybody else notice that our dog can talk, but none of the other dogs can talk? Is that weird? Uh, let me hear another name on that list, please. Um, Kermit the Frog. Kermit the Frog. Why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the frog? Let me hear one more name, please. Stewie Griffin. Stewie Griffin. They love how that love of yours coming along kind of nice. Come out of me, come out of me, come out of me, come out of me. I look forward to reading it. Uh, It's actually one of the earlier ones you read. If you are thinking of Peter Griffin, I want to see there. It's Peter Griffin, ladies and gentlemen! Hello to welcome to a live virtual show with my magical memories entertainment. I'm Nathan Fan. Uh, it is so fantastic to be here. Yes, I've got my bow tie on. I I, I, I rushed to throw it on, so hopefully it looks good. I know this seems probably like a bit of overkill to uh, be wearing a suit and tie, especially during the summer, but it's worth it for all of you. Uh, although I do uh, typically dress in a suit every single day. Anyways, and I know that seems ridiculous. Uh, I know that seems like so much effort to go through, especially in this day and age. But you know, it's important because here's the thing. I know what you're thinking. What's Nathan been drinking? That cannot be the case. Each day when you rise, you put on a suit and tie, even while you shelter in place. If you wear PJs, well, that's just fine. But I want to look sharp all the time. It's a truth you can't refuse. Nothing suits me like a suit. Picture a world where all the boys and girls are impeccably well dressed. This delivery guy in a jacket and tie, this puffy in a double dress. This 80s dude with mutton chops, this baby with the lollipop. This lady cop who's kind of cute. Nothing suits him like a suit. Wingman I can wear, they're all so debonair. The perfect way to snare a go with daddy It may be blue or black Check out this perfect rack I want to give them a squeeze Oh really? Then answer these questions If you please What would you do if you had to pick between a suit and a pot of gold? Suit what would you say if you throw your suit away and exchange you never get old suit? What would you pick one million suits a single three piece of suit? Suits. What if world peace were within your reach and I I'm gonna stop you right there. Listen. The answer is obviously suits. Come on, clearly. Two, three, four. Girls will come and girls will go, but there's only one absolute. Every bro on the go needs to know that there's no accepted substitute. I'm sorry, suits, let's make amends. My son has asked my best friend. Through casual Fridays down the lawn. There's nothing to do Wait for it!
it is. Oh, what a way to start my day. Fantastic. Go, give me one moment here and just adjust my camera angle. Hello. Hello. Do you come here often? Hi there. Nice to meet you. Let me just move this right here. Hopefully that does the trick. Uh, move, you said move the camera up a bit. I'm getting notes to move the camera. There we go. Is that better? And how's the audio level now? Excellent. And how's the... I'm, I'm chatting with my uh, with the tech person running this with DJ Burchard. Pew, pew, pew. And how does the... I, I adjusted the gain toward the latter half of that song. Did that sound better? I hope that sounded better. I'm also going to bump this up just a tiny bit. I'm having difficulty hearing it, uh, which means I think I have to bring it down over here in the mix. Uh, you know, it's very interesting. So my name is Nathan Fan. Uh, it's so fantastic to be performing for uh, anybody, even if I can't necessarily see you all. But here we are coming from my in-home studio. Uh, I'm used to performing all sorts of venues across the world. Uh, most uh, Lately, in the past year, I was performing mostly on cruise ships. Cruise ships, you get a whole team of people who are like, ah, what do you need? You need water? You need a stool? You need uh, sheet music? Do you need a music stand? Do you need what? And then you tell them all the lights and things like that. Um, and uh, they handle it for you. And now uh, I'm at home and I'm running basically an entire television studio out of my uh, studio. Uh, so here's where we're all at, exactly. So undoubtedly, as I was kind of, as I've been speaking, you've probably noticed uh, something, a slight discrepancy between the way that I look and the way that I sound. So allow me to address that now and answer the burning question in your minds. The answer is yes, I really am Vietnamese. Good, moving along with the uh, rest of the program. Mm. I know some of you aren't used to hearing really thick Vietnamese accents. Uh, this is what we sound like. At least this is what we sound like when I grew up in the very uh, northwestern part of Vietnam called Glasgow, which is what I grew up in, exactly. For anyone who didn't get that punchline, Glasgow's in Scotland, not Vietnam. Good. Just wanted to make sure. Every once in a while when I'll tell that joke to the people like, I don't, is, it, is Glasgow in Vietnam? It is not. Scotland. Uh, so I did grow up in Scotland from the age of uh, 1 to 11. Uh, yeah, and uh, while I was living there, I got a very unique nickname. Now, here's the thing that you have to know. <laughs> is that uh, today I'm going to be doing mostly comedy and singing. However, uh, one of the ways that I usually make my living is by doing magic shows. Now, my magic shows do contain a lot of comedy and singing as well. But when I was a kid, I wasn't doing the singing or the comedy thing yet. I just learned a couple of tricks, and it kind of caught on, and everyone liked it. Uh, and then I slowly started it adding in the music and the comedy. And so, while I was growing up, I got a nickname. And that nickname is Magic Asian Man. It's a true story. That's what they called me, Magic Asian Man. I realized I was looking at the ring light and not at the camera. And now I'm looking at the camera. Hello. Yes, look deep into my eyes and sleep. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, sorry. Uh, so while I was growing up in Glasgow, they started calling me Magic Asian Man. Uh, that's what they eventually wound up calling me, actually, to be technically accurate. Because the first nickname they had for me was Wee Man. You know, Wee Man, like Wee means tiny, right? So Wee Man, you're right down there, Wee Man. Ah, hey! Because uh, that's how I sounded back then. And then they started to call me Wee Asian Man, because there's lots of wee people running about. Don't want to get us all confused. You know, how's the weather down there, wee Asian Man? Scree! And then they started to call me Magic Asian Man, Magic Asian Man. Yep, good luck getting that out of your head for the rest of the day. Uh, <laughs> uh, good. So I just want to make sure that I've got everything that I need. Excellent. So, uh, yes, performing on cruise ships is a whole lot of fun. Hopefully uh, we can get back to a world where that will be safe and feasible uh, very, very soon. Uh, and it's very interesting working on cruise ships uh, as a magician because you meet all sorts of people and you get asked all sorts of questions. And there's this one question I get asked more than anything else. And it's usually a certain type of person who asks me this question. Usually it will be an older gentleman with a manic glint in his eye, walks up to me with his wife in tow and says, I got a question for you, magic boy. Can you make my wife disappear? And we all have a good laugh because, oh, how clever is that? Mm, never heard that one before. Yes. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, I would humor them. And so for the longest time when they'd ask me this question, my go-to response was, uh, you know what? I can't, but I know a guy in New Jersey, 50 grand. You'll never see her again. Everyone has a laugh. And we go about our day. But here's the thing. I kept on getting asked this question over and over and over again. I felt like every other person who chatted with me would ask me this question. You know, you're just on your way to the restroom or to the buffet, and someone's like, hey, can you make my wife disappear? And the more and more I heard this question, the more it started to bother me fundamentally. So now, when people ask me, when a man asks me, can you make my wife disappear? I look them dead in the eyes, and I say, you know what? I can't, but if you keep on asking questions like that, she's going to disappear on her own. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. 
Uh, all right. So uh, performing on cruise ships, got a lot of time on my hands. Uh, and in addition to, to telling jokes and singing, I also write a lot as well. I trained at writing, uh, in writing at an art school. And uh, I decided to write a song because I find it kind of difficult to explain to people um, what magic was like and how difficult it is as a profession. I'm going to move this table just a tiny bit up. I've got this table off to the side there. There we go. Raise it up. Rise up. Shout it from the rooftops. Rise up. There we go. Excellent. Uh, so I sat down and I wrote a song about magic and how hard it is. Now, I know what you're thinking. Magic. Can't you just like, can't a seven-year-old buy a kit and do magic? And the answer is yes, they absolutely can. And if you would like to, I have a magic kit that a seven-year-old could do. Let me know if you want one, because uh, I got nothing else to do. Ah, uh, comes a little video link and everything with me teaching how to do these tricks. Anyways, so set this right here, like that, good. Ah, uh, so I thought I'd write a song about magic and how hard it is. Now here's the thing, yes, some tricks are easy. I'll be perfectly honest. You can go and buy a prop-based magic trick that does a whole lot of the work for you, yes. However, magic in and of itself is difficult. Think about it. If you were to try to become a full-time magician tomorrow, how would you go about accomplishing that? What would you even do? What are the steps you would take? Sure, you could go on a show like America's Got Talent or AGT, as we call it, but you get 90 seconds. Uh, and, and then you could market yourself. But how do you even develop the material? Where do you break in magic material, that sort of thing? Uh, so there's lots of little tiny things. How do you do that? So I thought I would write a song about magic and how difficult it is. And I have with me my, yes, it's teal, my teal ukulele. Uh, and I'm going to sing a song about magic and how difficult it is. Here we go. It's called Magic is Hard. Uh, Steve, how, can you hear the ukulele okay over the microphone? Thank you. Here we go. Magic is hard, magic is hard, magic is hard. Magic is hard, magic is hard, magic is hard. There's more, don't worry. Magic is hard, magic is hard. Magic is hard. Uh, you spend all those years as an outcast and a loner. You strike up by yourself as a small business owner. The tricks aren't up your sleeve. They're sat on a shelf. And as they gather dust, you must believe in yourself. It's a tricky position, being a magician. You study just as long as a lawyer or physician. But there are no degrees from respected institutions for sleight of hand. And big stage illusions, no, there is no Harvard or Juilliard for training doves and back palming cards. You want to get a credit on your CV, you got to get your face up on that TV. Get booked on a show like ADT abroad, cast your craft for the world to see. And all in 90 seconds, it ain't easy. And now you understand why I'm singing that a magic is hard, magic is hard. Magic is hard, magic is hard, magic is hard. Magic is hard. One more time now. Magic is hard. Magic is hard. Magic is hard. I'm going to try something here. Uh, I'm going to hop into the comments and see. Uh, uh, there's the only person who's commented so far. Named, someone named Mary. Hey, Mary. Hi there, Mary. Are you still watching? If you are, let me know in the comments. Or if anybody else wants to help, I need a volunteer for this one. I have no idea if anybody's watching right now. I assume people are watching. Or maybe you're all just like behind the keyboard, not wanting to interact. Uh, there's an interactive aspect to this song. And if nobody wants to interact, then uh, I guess we'll... Nothing? I can only see... Yes. Hello! I see a Jessica Harkin. Hello! Jessica, would you like to... Jessica! Would you like to help me out for this? Oh, yeah, there's also a slight delay. I'm remembering now. There's a delay because we're going through StreamYard. So there's, a, there's like a good 20 seconds sometimes or a minute delay. So this aspect of the drink may not work so much. Hello. Okay, Jessica, we're going to try this, okay? Uh, Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Uh, Jessica, can you do me a favor and think of a number between one and a hundred? Jessica, are you thinking of a number? Could you type it in the comments? And now we wait. Depending on how long the delay is, we could be here a while. 
So how's your day so far? F- five. All right. Jessica's thinking of the number five. Here we go. Uh, whoo, okay, now here's the deal. Before the show even started, I wrote, d- wrote down a number and I put it in an envelope. And that envelope is leaning against my water. It's been sitting there the whole time. Would you all like to see what the number is? I'd like to point out, Jessica said the number five. Could have picked any number, one through 100. Picked five. Magic is hard. Boom. Nailed it. There you are. A song about magic and how hard it is. You know, in a comedy show, that works a lot better. I do that during my magic show. And sometimes people are like, did he mess that one up? I don't understand what just happened. <laughs> Set that down. Pew. Uh, thank you very much, Jessica. Uh, let's see. And hello, Olia. Hello. Olia. Ooh. All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna undo the bow tie now. It's a... Uh, Little too warm for that. I just needed it for the joke at the beginning. But now we have, here we are, got my nice linen suit, my new linen suit. And I've got my little trademark teal going on. Yeah, not too shabby. Very happy with this arrangement. Um, so uh, I, as I mentioned earlier, my upbringing, I, uh, I got into magic first. And then I slowly started realizing, oh, people like magic better when they're funny. And so uh, I slowly started developing comedy. That's true. I was not born funny. Uh, that's kind of like my my deep shameful secret. Yes, um. <laughs> my audience, I have a confession. <laughs> that's loud. My secret, I must now betray. I am not a born fool. No, it took work to get this way. When I was a lad, I was gloomy and sad as I was from the day I was born. When other babes giggled and giggled and wiggled, I loudly was proudly forlorn. My friends and my family looked at me clamly, they thought there was something amiss. When others of various antics hilarious, all I could manage was this, or this, or this. My father, he shouted, he needs to be blunted, his teeth on a wreath, I'll hand him. My mother, she cried, and she rushed to my side, you're a brute and you don't understand. So they sent for a witch with a terrible touch to see how my future impressed her. She took a look at me. And said, <laughs> What else can he be but a jester? A jester? A jester. A funny idea, a jester. No butcher, no baker, no handsome baker, and no a jester. As a jester? But where could I learn any comical turn? It was not on the book on the shelf. No teacher to take me or mold me or make me a merry man, fool, or an elf. But I'm proud to recall that in no time at all, there's been no other resources. Now I can shoot and toot. T A N I Q. I started to travel to try and unravel my mind and to get a new chance. When I got to Spain, it was perfectly plain that the field that appealed was the dance. The Spanish were clannish, but I wouldn't vanish. I learned every step they had planned. The first step of all isn't hard to recall. For the first step of all is to stand and stand and stand and stand and stand and stand and sometimes they stand like this for days. And then they stomp again the very, very magically floor and stomp all over it. Rodrigo, la musica, por favor! Ole! Ooh, ah, oh, oh, that's gonna hurt. Limp the rest of the day. <clears throat> The terrible fact is, after all of my practice, I made a fool of myself. I sadly decided that dancing as I did to sing was a thing that was sure. I found me a teacher, a crotchety creature who used to sing coloratura. She twisted my chin, pushed my diaphragm in with a poker, she vocalized me. But she said it was best that I thump my chest. You may gather that rather surprised me. 
I was on solid ground till I suddenly found that in Venice I was to appear. The Galileo cow was a choppy canal and me a high sea gondolier. I nervously perched as the gondola lurched before the king's palazzo as I started my song. My voice, it was strong, but my stomach, I fear, was not so. Oh, so let me, oh, oh, oh. Uh, pen, I did, 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 did. This is the water, I'm drowning. I was bad, but the king was abused as his majesty roared as I fell overboard. And I found the scene that to be a buffoon is a serious thing as a rule. For a gesture of deep employment is to kill himself for your enjoyment. And a gesture unemployed <laughs> is nobody. We have a. Oh, thank you, Mary. And. <laughs> Uh, for anyone who is curious uh, as to what the heck that was, uh, it's a lovely number uh, from the mal uh, from the court jester, great old school uh, musical set in medieval times. Hello, James Jordan, uh, uh, sung by Danny Kay, who's famous for really really tricky patter songs uh, with just lots of lyrics, really really fast. And uh, I always love an excuse to break that song out. I don't get to do it very often. I also don't often get to perform my own music. Other than that, magic is hard number. Pretty much, uh, I've got a few original songs and never get a chance uh, to do them. So I figured now would be about as good a time as any. So I'm going to do the song. And because I don't do that often, I have not memorized the song that I wrote. So I'm going to do that by cheating ever so slightly and looking at it. All right. Uh, excellent. <coughs> if you have, uh, feel free to jump into the comments. Let me know if you're watching, if you're having a good time. Uh, that sort of thing. It is, uh, if you have a question, let me know. I'll see if I can answer it. Maybe I'll do it through song. Who knows? Here we are. An original song that I wrote. Uh, I started writing this about 10 years ago, uh, and then I just never finished it, because that's the sort of person that I am. And then I was on cruise ships last year. Uh, I was cruising like for a solid, basically, like 10 months. And I was really off the ships only like maybe one and a half of those months. So I was, I'd come home for like two weeks. Sometimes two days. Sometimes my turnaround would be like 36 hours. It was madness. But uh, I had time to finish this song. So um, this song, quite cleverly, is called I Wrote This Song. Enjoy. <laughs> Ooh, almost lost my ear, brother. Weep. There we go. You and me are where we're supposed to be. And with you by my side, I must confide I... Much prefer this finished version of me and you are something to that effect, but more grammatically correct. It has a sound that rings so true. I wrote this song while dreaming of your kisses. I wrote this song while singing of your smile, intoxicated, perplexed by how one misses, inebriated by your guile. And now I'm lost. In the very wonder of you, but that's the cost. I'll gladly pay loving you, loving you. You and me were always meant to be, and with the love so true, what can I do but use every thought just to thank God I found you? And I were two letters in the alphabet who both finally have met. And now what can't we do? I wrote this song while dreaming of your kisses. I wrote this song while singing of your smile. Intoxicated, perplexed by how one misses. Ine inebriated by your guile. And now I'm lost in the very wonder of you. But that's the cost. I'll gladly pay loving you. And now I'm lost in the merry wonder of you. But that's the cost. I'll gladly pay loving you, loving you.
There it is. Uh, as you can see, my love of songs with lots and lots of lyrics transcended into the stuff that I wrote as well, because they're fun. Uh, something that, that other people also point out to me from time to time is that uh, what happens to your accent when you're singing, it disappears. Uh, and that's the thing about accents. It's strange, but you sing with the accent that you learn to sing, and it's like speaking, right? But not a lot of people go around teaching singing with a thick accent through it. Uh, and also another thing is Scottish accents are the worst to sing in. It's a very, very, it's it's quite nice when you're talking to someone like it sounds very pretty. Uh, you can't, you can't always understand them, but it sounds very nice in singing ugly accent. Think about it. You're jamming out to a funk song because she's a brack house. So mighty, mighty, just letting it all hang out. And it sounds terrible. Sounds terrible. It can actually uh, be a complete and total detriment to songs. Uh, when you're singing. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take a pop song. I was uh, just going through songs uh, that are fun, and I find this lovely song um, by the Plain White Tees called Hey There Delilah, and I realize that I am too Scottish to sing songs like Hey There Delilah. This is what happens when you're really, really Scottish, and you try to sing songs like Hey There Delilah. <laughs> and there's page turns, so I apologize in advance. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Did I fall out of tune while I was playing? Let's find out. Nope, that sounds good. Nope. Hold on. Is it better? Yep, okay, we fell slightly out of tune. We're back! That's all. Hey there, Delilah, what's it like in New York City? I'm a thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you look so pretty. Hey, you, oh, what's it be minor do? Times Square can he shine as bright as you. I swear it's true. Hey there, Delilah, Danny, you worry about the distance. I'm right there if you get lonely. Give this song another lesson, close your eyes. Listen to my voice, it's my disguise. I'm by your side. Oh, it's what you do to me. 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 It's what you do to me. A thousand miles seems pretty far, but they've got planes and trains and cars. But I wouldn't walk 500 miles, and I wouldn't walk 500 more just to be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your door. When I'm working, I, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's working hard for you. When the money Comes in for the work I'll do. I'll pass almost every penny on to you. And when I come home, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who comes back home to you. And if I grow old, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's growing old with you. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your door. When I'm lonely, yes, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who's lonely without you. Hold on a second, I swear it's true. Hey there, Delilah, I know times, times are getting crazy, but just believe me, girl, someday I'll pay the bills with this ukulele, we'll have it good. We'll have the life we knew we would, my world is good. Hey there, Delilah, you be good, and Danny, you miss me two more years, and you'll be done with school, and I'll be making history like you do. You'll... You'll know it's all because of you. We can do whatever we want to. 
Hey there, Delilah, here's for you. Whoa. There it is. We know what this one's for you. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 there it is. That's what happens when you're too Scottish to sing. Hey, there's a, oh, there's more. Oh, but I, sorry, I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the man who walked a thousand miles to meet you in New York. There it is. Oh, uh, if you like my music, uh, feel free to follow me on uh, Facebook. Uh, if you just go to Facebook and look up Magic Asian Man, uh, it's facebook.com uh, slash Magic Asian Man. Very easy to find me. I'm also on uh, Instagram and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, I've got an album coming out soon. So that original song, I wrote the song, will be on that album. Uh, I think I've got a, um, I think I've got one of my mashups on there as well. Every once in a while, I just do these mashups because uh, they're fun. Uh, and I like combining these songs that have no right being together, uh, but for some odd reason they're in similar keys or something like that, or similar chord progressions. Uh, so that's, that's lots of fun. All right. Um, I was going, oh, do we have? Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, so I haven't done any magic. I've just been singing and doing comedy. Uh, and if you if you don't like, I was going to do just a quick magic trick, uh, but I just realized I, I wasn't sure if I had I would have time to do it. Uh, so give me one second. I just need to see if I can. Hold on. I'll be right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. Is it here? I found it. I found it. I'm going to do a quick magic trick for you all. Uh, I just need some cards. I know these look like cards. They're, these are not cards. These are actually um, a top hat. It just kind of looks like cards. Here we go. I'm going to do a quick card trick for everyone here. I'm going to grab a random deck that I've just got singing around, sitting around. All right, a quick card trick, sleight of hand card trick, uh, and also a song to go along with it. And this will be my big closer, ladies and gentlemen. And then I've uh, got so many things to do uh, today. I'm participating in. It's kind of like uh, they do these things in the film world called the 24-hour film festival where they release some kind of criteria or like this is a theme, this is a line, this is a prop, whatever it is. And you have to make a movie, like fully film it, shoot it, edit it, and release it in like 24 hours. Uh, this is kind of like that, except we have six hours, and we're doing it virtually through Zoom with a bunch of other uh, theater people uh, in our area. So I'm participating in that today, and I'm also doing a magic lecture for a magic club out in Texas. So, you know, I'm not busy at all today, uh, but I still find time for you because you're worth it. Uh, so once again, thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. I'm going to close with this magic trick and with some singing. And I hope my hands are nice and warmed up for this because this is literally the most difficult card trick I know. Uh, I'm doing something that lots of people only do with one card, and I'm doing it uh, with all 52 cards instead. Uh, if you enjoy it, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Magic Asian Man. Super easy to find me. Uh, or if you want to see other stuff I'm up to, check out my Patreon. I'm also releasing like stuff that I'm writing. Uh, and sometimes when a silly idea pops in my head before it's ready for a real audience, uh, I my uh, patrons on Patreon get to experience these things first. Uh, so that, of course, is patreon.com slash magic Asian man. And here we go. Something uh, with all 52, all 50, sorry, if it seems like I'm stalling, it's because this doesn't, I am stalling because this isn't 52 cards. This is 53. I can feel it. You know what I did? I left the joker in here. Hold on. Got it. Uh, I don't need the joker for this one because the joker is me. How's the music on the lawn There's always a joker in the pack. There's always a cardboard clown. The poor frightened fool falls on his back, and everyone laughs when he's down. There's always a funny man in the game, but he's only funny by mistake. Everyone laughs at him just the same. They don't see his pain.
it hard to say. They don't care as long as there is a gesture. Just a fool, as foolish as he can be. There's always a joke. That's the rule. The fake teeth that hand and bite. The Joker is he. There's always a funny man in the game, but he's only funny by mistake. Everyone laughs at him just the same. They don't see his pain in hard to break. They don't care as long as there is a jester Just a fool, as foolish as he can be There's always a joker, that's the rule But fate heals a hand in I see The joker is me The joker is me The joker is me Gross. Me! Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Nathan Fan, the Magic Asian Man. Uh, today, the singing comedy Asian man. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. We want to thank the guys from Magical Memories. They gave us a fantastic night for our daughter's prom mitzvah. So much to Magical Memories. They literally made my night completely perfect. They helped with my quinceanera. These are like music seats. So much fun. I had such a wonderful night. It was the best night of my life. Magical Memories was amazing. We had a wonderful time at our wedding. It was amazing. I guess. We just finished watching a great show. A magical memory. The magical memory is a wonderful job. My kids had a great time. It was totally awesome. Thank you. Magical Memories was amazing. I had the best time ever. It was so much fun. We had such a fucking blast. Everything was perfect.